What's up? Cool. I just started filming this with the back camera and I've never felt so alone in my life. Um, I like to be able to look at my dumb reflection as I'm filming. Um, I'm gonna listen to Ethel Kane's new album, Preacher's Daughter. I am not at my apartment today. I'm at my parents' house. They are out of town and they needed me here to watch their dogs. So here I am. I'm Xander, this is this is Leo, this is one of my parents' dogs. Oh, this is Sophia. This is Sophia. Come on, Sophia. Come on. Yeah, there, there. Alright, okay. Alright, alright, alright. Boundaries, boundaries, boundaries. I guess I have too much free time, so I am pushing hard harder than I have been on my YouTube channel. Um trying to just trying to grow, so leave a comment, give me some suggestions for content, like, I'm literally, I'll do anything, no I won't, but like, we can go on a hike together, we can go thrifting, we can listen to music, we can produce a song together, you can watch me paint, I don't know, I can just like show you my life. Um, number one thing that you can do in this world is subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's probably the most important thing you're ever going to do, so I'm here, got a fire I'm trying to get going in the fireplace, I've got pretty views in the background, um, and I'm excited to listen to Ethel Kane for the first, first time. I think her vibe, it looks really interesting, um, oh yeah, this is her first full-length debut album. Ethel Kane's lifting voice and intimate adult alternative songs navigate melancholy moods in dreamy reverb drenched atmospheres. I mean, that's literally my prerogative. Like that's my ideal. I think I've been like scared to listen to her in case I don't like it because it seems like everyone loves her. And I don't know, I feel like I would just be bummed if I didn't like it. And so I've been like avoiding. But I'm excited. I'm excited. All right. Preacher's Daughter. Is it lame to read the like Apple Music about thing? On her expansive debut album, singer, songwriter, producer Hayden Silas Anadunia introduces her alter ego, Ethel Kane. A southern anti-bell desperate to escape the smothering grip of familial trauma, Christianity, and the American dream. On Preacher's Daughter, the Florida-reared conceptualist and recovered southern Baptist finds a sense of freedom in darkness and depravity, spinning a seedy, sweeping, slow-core yarn of doomed love and patriarchal oppression with cinematic ambition. Yo, I like... I like the, her, like... Her vibe. All right. Kane follows the titular preacher, the first word on droning opener, family tree intro, then teases a little pop star charm on the twangy American teenager before digging her teeth deep into sex, drugs, violence, and rock and roll with the provocative pout of Lana Del Rey. She laments a lost love on the Heartland Heartbreaker. A house in Nebraska. Okay, all right. I don't need to read any more of that. But yeah, Lana Del Rey is like my OG number one. Been her fan since like 2010. Um, nothing will ever top her. I would literally make videos of me listening to her albums if you guys would be into that just because I love them so much. But it would just be me sitting here like singing along. But it might be fun to talk about them. But yeah, today we're listening to... Preacher's Daughter by Ethel Kane. Let's go. I like the album art.
<clears throat> it's, it's, um... Okay. First track, Family Tree Intro. It's so like, it's like velvet silky. Almost sounds like it's auto tuned, but maybe it's not. Maybe she's just like God walking this earth. Okay. It's so lush. It's like this. This is like. Like, this is the texture of the song, but it's in my ears and not, like, in my hands. Side note, my parents have, like, the bomb, bombest ass speakers, so I'm just, like, feeling it in my chest. I just remembered how dehydrated I am. One sec. All right. I like took a hot yoga class and then a really hot bath. And so my body is like. Okay, what? I just gotta talk about how genius that line was. Swinging by my neck from the family tree. He'll laugh and say, you know I raised you better than this. Okay, so she's talking about, like, family lineage and also, like, tree. Like, the tree is raised. And she's, like, hanging from the tree by her neck. Then leave me hanging so they can all laugh at me. Like, leave me hanging emotionally, physically. Like, damn, girl, what? All right. Okay, nice, good intro. This album is very clearly about her family trauma and escaping her like religious background obviously from the description but that song i feel like does a good job describing like exactly what this album's going to be about Yeah, I'm using a torch. We we use a torch to light our fireplace in, in the Stefani house. All right. <clears throat> okay. Let's get back to it. All right, track one. Cool, good intro. Lush, lush like a velvet pillow. Um, track two, American Teenager. Okay, like outright, I have so much respect for anyone who sings, writes, and produces their own music. Like, so much talent. She almost has like a Charlie XCX vibe to her voice. And like the way it's produced, it's like. I really expected this album to have like very folky like production just based purely off of the album cover. So it's cool to see that it's, it's kind of got like an electronic twin, twinge, tinge.
Okay. I mean, it was a good track. It was like nicely laid out. Um, very like pop B sounding. Like I almost feel like I could hear that on the radio. Uh, like somehow it made me think of Carly Rae Jepsen. Is that weird? It was good though. All right. A house in Nebraska. Do you see this? He's the most codependent dog you'll ever meet. This track's seven minutes long. Oh my gosh. All right. She does a really good job at like creating like a world. Just like making me cry. Damn, feeling it. good if I heard that like in a Whole Foods I would break down and start crying I'm like I've processed all my past relationships so it's like I don't feel that way about anyone really but it's still like I have felt that way and it is heartbreaking and oh my god favorite track so far that seven almost eight minutes like flew by. This whole album's an hour and 15 minutes long, so wish me luck editing this motherfucker. Would y'all just look at this view that I get to have while listening to this album? Is it not the perfect backdrop for this like sad, moody Ethel Kane? All right, and this is my very sad fire. Um, oh, there it goes. Like, you'd think wood would just catch on fire. Like, it's wood, you know? It's like misting gently outside. It's perfect. All right, track four. Western Nights, six minutes. <laughs> how she started it with like a banger with American Teenager and these songs are like super emotional and slow. Yo, this fire. Like, have you guys ever started a fire in a fireplace before? Is it meant to be impossible? This song's not like hitting me in my heart the same way that um, A House in Nebraska did. It's good, it's nice, it's beautiful, it's lovely. Um, but it's a little more like that, whereas like Western Nights felt more like cinematic and like really emotional. She's obviously very, very talented. Okay, Family Tree. We already got a reference to Family Tree in the intro. Did she already say this line in, an, in another song, I think? These crosses all over my body remind me of who I used to be. Hmm? Well, he's 
Am I crazy? All right. Give myself up to him and offer I love these guitar breakdowns, like, so sick. It's such a cool blend of just everything, like the, the themes, the instrumentals, the, like, electric guitar, the slow, like, intros. Somehow that just reminded me of Sufjan Stevens. Like, cool, cool. All right. Ooh. Vocals. That was good. Almost sounds like Florence Welch. Like if Florence like toned it down a little bit. But she's still like giving so much. Um this like intense breakdown at the end is what I feel like uh Western Nights was missing. It's good. It's like a reward for getting through like five and a half minutes of the song, like not getting through like in a bad way, but just like, it's nice to have that reward. That one was good too. I have to be honest, I feel like I wasn't paying super, super close attention to like the story she was telling with this one. I blame the fireplace. I'm giving up on that shit. After I'm done filming, I might give another go, but no. Out of the three, six, seven minute tracks so far at House of Nebraska, top, Family Tree, second, and then Western Nights, third. All right, this next track, Hard Times. Hard Times. Paramore. This is a Paramore cover. The guitar sweeping, strumming is reminding me of like Alex G. I'm liking it. I'm liking the, the vibes of this one so far, I can tell. But it like ties into the whole vibe of the album, so I like. Tired to leave. That's sad. I can relate. Okay, she didn't belt it. I thought it would have been nice, you know, like a two time. Since she kept re like repeating the same lines, kind of. Um, it was good. Chill track. My fave by far is still a house in Nebraska. Like, I don't know if anything can top that. Nine minute track, Thoroughfare. Track seven, we are moving past the halfway point, but maybe not with the length of the songs, but all right.
country. I like how she doesn't have too much reverb on her voice here. Like you can really hear the tone nicely. You know, I love any artist who sings about giving up their own personal power for someone else. Been there. See, I love, like, it's like nine minutes, but it's such a beautiful, like, slow build. Like, I could just tell it's gonna, like, at some point. Every other song on this album would beg to differ that love has never meant much to Ethel Kane. Just saying. Mashup opportunity right there. Now I gotta drive across the country and belt this song as loud as I can in my car. Like, come on. I'm assuming that's her on the guitar, right? In your pickup truck with all of your dumb luck is the only place I'd ever want to be. <laughs> like, I love that she's just giving us all that, like, all that time for her to, like, push herself and, like, really take us on an adventure. This track's up there with me for, um, a house in Nebraska. Nice, good track, good track, big fan. All right, Gibson Girl, this is one of the only two explicit songs on the album. giving Lana to me. Like, I could see her singing this. It almost sounds like Santana in the background, like jamming out on his guitar. See, she's not afraid to like mix the electronic like touches of overproducing her vocals with like this very gritty sound and is cool. Um, it's just so lush, like the, the production is so lush. All right, I'm gonna try to pronounce this. Ptolemy, Ptolemy, track nine out of 13. What? Like, is that her voice? I like this.
this whole album. Woo! I would love to see her play this live. Crazy. It's like her Bjork, like exorcist, exorcism moment, and I'm here for it. Not to like put Bjork in that, but just the name of the track doesn't make any sense to me. Like the name of most of Bjork's tracks, the names of her tracks, and it's just so like intense and like visceral and like raw. Like imagine going. Through. Like imagine going to her show and she opens with this track, like mood set. She just tore everyone's walls down and now there's like rawness to enjoy the rest of the show. Like, shit. What? That was an adventure. That was great. All right. Track 10, second shortest track on the album, and it's three minutes and 40 seconds. I respect that. In 2022, it seems like no one's doing long, tra long tracks anymore. August Underground. Whoa, this one doesn't have any lyrics. Let's vibe out, let's vibe out. instructor I would start each class with this song and then end like when everyone's just laying down shavasana with the previous song so they all think they're dying <laughs> cool um this next one is called televangelism and it is the shortest track number 11 also no lyrics so you know what that means i get to lay down I didn't mention this when I was laying there, but this really reminds me of the song Unicorn by Fortet, if any of you have heard it. If not, check it out. It's like the, um, that piano, the... soothing okay two more tracks sun bleached flies i like the name of that i feel so at peace right now holy shit her full octave range like in one song in one verse it's so nice you are no longer on the sidelines you are front and center on the stage you're killing it killing it
That was nice. That was nice. All right. One more track, y'all. Strangers. Let's do it. I feel like this album, it's like making me reflect on my own heritage and feel, it's like making me feel proud of my story, you know, like, this is a good album. So glad this album has like an epic closer like this. Hell yeah. I need more of Ethel Kane screaming at the top of her lungs. That was great. Probably, yeah, my favorite tracks were Strangers, Ptolemy. I really enjoyed the two instrumental tracks. Um, House in Nebraska, number one. Yeah, I'm glad I finally listened to this. Quite the album, quite the impression. Um, let's take, take it outside. It's literally getting dark. <clears throat> the dogs are chilling out here now. Yeah, start to finish. Very enjoyable. Great storytelling, great scenes painted, super consistent album, kept it interesting. Hell yeah, Ethel Kane. She's a real one. I'm excited to see what else she puts out. And I guess I have to go listen to her um, previous couple EPs. <sighs> it's cold out. It's cold. Enjoy your day. Enjoy your week. I think I'm going to upload this on Monday. Um, yeah, leave a comment. Obviously, subscribe. Let me know what you thought. What kind of effect did it have on you? Did it, did it make you reflect on your life and where you came from? shaking um and yeah stay tuned i think on friday i'm gonna have a little like listening party with all my new subscribers to hear my shitty track that i'm releasing just kidding it's not shitty i think it's good but i also i'm no ethel kane Ooh, shaking. all right i'm gonna go get that fire going I don't know what I'm doing. Thank you for watching. <sighs> All right. See you next time.